Welcome to Digitally Creative. I'm your host, Vincent Ferrari, and joining me this week is a man who needs no introduction, but you know what? He's going to get one anyway. Um, I mean, you've seen the title of the show, so you know who the guest is, but the guest, of course, is the one and only, the Godfather, Jimmy DeResta. Hi, Jimmy. Hey, buddy. How are you? I hate the Godfather thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're always, you're never going to shake that at this point. It, I, not after Justin's podcast, not after Justin's new documentary, never. It was it was really funny seeing a whole section about that, like you being called the Godfather. And I one of the things that caught me when you were talking about that was how you feel like you're always the oldest guy in the room. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Like I was at Maker Camp. You're definitely not the oldest guy in the room. There was some people a lot older yeah. than you, but That's I kind of understand what you were saying. Like you feel like the senior member of the tribe at that point. I, I do. It's everybody I speak to, my closest friend. I mean, Derek is my probably my closest friend in the Maker community, and he's a couple of years younger than me, but mm -hmm. besides that, everybody I meet is in their forties or thirties. You know, Bob and Dave, they're both 10 years younger than me at least. <laughs> and, but I don't know. I, it's just, it's just me feeling my age. Honestly, I get a little self-conscious about a few things and my age is one of them, but it's just something I'm going to have to learn to live with because there's, there's no alternative. But you benefit, like there's a flip side to that too. Like, you know, you, you are, you're 54, 55. I'll be 56 <laughs> in April. Okay, so you're going to be 56 in April, but that kind of conveys a certain amount of, I don't know, um, experience and dignity that people just like kind of I have hope, deference I for hope you. That's what it, <laughs> I'll put that on my new dating uh, profile. Oh, dating profiles. <laughs> I have experience, dignity, and a real cool beard. And a white beard, yeah. <laughs> and people call me the godfather. Everything's fine. <laughs> well, thanks for having me, and congratulations on the new incarnation. Thank you. Um, I should, I, you know, I don't usually relay private conversations to friends, but one of the reasons that this even exists in its current form is you telling me that two things you said, one, you, I said, I didn't really want to do it alone. And you said, you can do it alone. You'll be fine. And number two was you saying you would be my first guest. Yep. And when <laughs> I kind of conceived of the show, I'm like, all right, if I'm going to reboot this, I'm going to hold them to it. So I texted Jimmy and I'm like, <laughs> hey, I remember distinctly a certain person saying they'd be my first guest on the new show. Is that still true? And you said, yeah, let's do it. When are we recording? I'm like, holy crap. He, was, he, was, he wasn't just being nice. He really meant it. <laughs> so, no, honestly, when you and Ethan ended it and you guys had that very heartfelt conversation, I'm in my mm -hmm. blacksmith shop whenever that was like, I guess it was like a year ago because I remember it was a little cold out. Yeah. And, and, I'm in my, and I'm like tearing up. I'm like, there's two friends that are in love and they <laughs> decided to dissolve this thing for you know whatever personal reasons they did. And then when, so I was emotional. I texted you guys right there and then. I was like, mm -hmm, guys, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to hear this, but what a sweet send off. And then- that short episode that you put out in the middle of the summer and I'm working on my deck and I'm like, Oh my God, this guy, Oh my God, so <laughs> I know. Sorry to this guy. It sounded like you were going in a direction that you had some control over, but not fully control. And, and, and you're like, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. You, yeah. I sent you some love. It was, it was, it was weird because I, I did that episode. I'm like, I had to kind of, it was a, like a turning point for the yeah. podcast. It was like, oh, absolutely. Do, do I want to reboot with another co-host do I want to reboot at all? Or do I want to take the opportunity, see where my business goes and just get out of podcasting for a little while? And maybe if I feel like it, get back to it. And truthfully, I'm just going to be as honest as possible. It wasn't, the business boom was very quickly over. Now, the business is still doing okay, but that boom was just a pop and it's kind of gone. So it's like, all right, cool. So that didn't really sustain itself. And I was like, but I really kind of want to do a podcast, but do, I don't want to do the same podcast. Right. I don't want to just keep this going beyond. It lived a good life. It ran a good run. It's time to do something else. So, mm -hmm. and here we are, Digitally Creative, episode one, which is weird because I, the people that will hear, you'll hear that you will hear this in episode two, but this is actually the second recording already. Yeah, you did Big Big Al a couple days ago. Big Al so I watched the Instagram. I saw that. Yeah, it's it's wild. It's wild. I'm really happy to be back. I'm really happy to have you on because when I was thinking about, you know, the concept for where I wanted to take the show and the things I wanted to focus on, digital fabrication, desktop fabrication, you know, people who are content creators, all of that stuff just really I don't know. I just get really excited about it. And I was thinking about people who have taken their craft and really adapted all these modern ways of manufacturing and building. And 
geez, as much as you love the gizmosity of something that's made in like the 1920s, you are just like the plasma <laughs> and CNCs and lasers yeah. and nothing is off limits. The only thing I've, the only piece of technology I've ever seen you balk at after using it for a while was the, the water jet. It was the only thing yeah. I've ever seen you go, yeah, I don't want this anymore. Get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. Water jet is fun. If you need, if you have a big, good, clean, giant one, that's worth mm -hmm. tens of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, it's a lot of energy for something you could just pick up and do yourself. Right. You know, I'm watching this thing and I, I could just bands all that out and be done in minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously if there's something that's a little bit more intricate, the water jet would probably be, but it's just so much energy. There's like this water pump spraying and oh, it was cleaning out, cleaning out the, 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 un, the thing underneath. And it's like yeah. getting media to, because yeah. people don't understand. They think it just cuts with water. It's like, no, that's actually abrasive. There's abrasive media that you have yeah. to maintain levels of. And the funny thing is, is I gave that machine to Derek and Derek called up uh Wazer and said, Jimmy's going to give me the machine. They gave it to me for a video, but I gave it to Derek so he could experiment with it. Mm -hmm. And they sent him some new parts because the machine got a little defective, but now it's back to running. But Derek yelled at me. He goes, you know why this thing is so heavy? I said, I don't know. He goes, it's got about 80 pounds of grit in the bottom of it that you never removed. <laughs> Like, and I didn't know. I just thought it washed through and ended up going down the drain. I didn't. I honestly it. thought that's how it worked too. Like I wouldn't. It stays have known. in the, the majority of it stays in the bottom. They have these two. Uh, there's these two troughs that are supposed to filter out, so the water is supposed to run through these troughs. And I emptied those troughs out a couple of times, but in all honesty, I do remember thinking, "Wow, I, I've already put like four big bags of this into that." And then <laughs> I guess it just washed out in the drain because it does have a drain going at the same time. <laughs> there's like three things happening all at the same time, and I just. And the water level in it was high enough to hide the giant mound of sand at the bottom. Was it Was it the machine? I, I feel like that was the machine that made you like not love dealing with modern like fabrication machines. Because you seem to have a lot of luck with everything else. You work well with the laser. You've done miracles with the CNC. You do things with the CNC that it's just like, oh, that's cool. I have um, fun with the CNC. I, I Honestly, there's a couple things I still haven't tackled quite a bit. And one of them is 3D CNC. The fourth mm -hmm. axis rotary and Aaron was here with me before Aaron passed away. My assistant, Aaron was good with the rotary. Anything mm -hmm. we had to do with the rotary, he figured it out. And so when Aaron would take up space in my brain, I would just be like, all right, that's, that's Aaron's thing. And so I wouldn't learn it. And so now it's time for me to figure out how to learn that. And uh, I just haven't had a project, but as soon as I do, I'll tackle it and figure it out. I'll unfold it. But that's, that's the way I go. I, I tinker when I have something new to do. It's it's kind of cool that you've you've managed to do that, by the way, because that's usually where people go. Instead of saying, "Oh, I have a project, I'm going to learn this thing," they usually do the opposite and they say, "I have a project, I don't know how to do the thing, I'm just not going to do the project." So right, right. No, when when, when the project, I'm pretty good at when the project calls for a certain methodology. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll learn that methodology. You know, they, like a project will certainly dictate the best way it should be done, mm -hmm. and you know. I spent years cutting letters on the bandsaw. I say this all the time. I spent years trying to be, stay on the line or split the line of the paper template that gets printed out. And then you spray glue it down to plastic or material. And then you, you, you take all the time and precision in the world to stay on the line, the best eye-hand coordination possible. And then this laser comes along that's a couple thousand dollars, which isn't much more expensive than a bandsaw. Yep. And it can cut exactly, not on the line. It, could, it cuts the line. The line. It splits it cuts, the line in half. <laughs> the line. And and it comes out perfect. So when people say, Are oh, you using technology for this, you're using technology for that? Well, let's see you do that by hand. I'm like, I can do that by hand. But why, why would I? <laughs> why would I when I could do this? You know, occasionally like I'll fire up the band so when I there's no reason to set up a file to cut one thing. Sure. Or I've done someone I would, gives me a paper pattern. I'm like, oh the paper pattern's already done. There's no reason to then translate this into a file. I'll just take it, spray glue it down, and cut it out. I've, I've actually, I actually had that conversation with Al too, cause we were talking about the same exact thing where I was like, oh yeah, like if I'm doing a juice groove and a cutting board, it's, you know, I could do that on the CNC. Sure. I can glue it down to the CNC, measure the damn things, position it exactly right. Set up the bit, zero everything, put, make sure the G code is correct. Plug in my computer and do it. Or I could literally just put the template on my table and just go bzz, 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 right. done. <laughs> you know, right. so it, there is a, there is, it's funny. Cause I, 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 Occasionally, I do this thing at uh, at this uh, LaFell LaFell High School in, in Hartsdale. There's a, a, a high school there, a private high school, and I, I go and they do. I help the students there from time to time. Danny Aviv is my is my my buddy over there, and he has me come in and talk to the students. And I'll see the students 3D printing 
a cylinder and then 3d printing 3d i'm like what do you need a cylinder for well i need a cylinder to do this and like i'll go to the paper rack and pull a towel out roll up <laughs> i'm like is it the same tube as this is this okay they're like well i could use that too i guess i'm like you just spent half the day setting up a file to print a two inch round tube when they're all around you you could just roll up cardboard and just scotch tape it and it serve the same purpose so it's important it's important to teach and also to be aware of when the appropriate digital necessity is needed and when it's not needed it so. it's it's like that old saying the not the difference between knowledge and wisdom right knowledge is knowing how to 3d print a cylinder and wisdom is knowing that the paint can is the same diameter <laughs> right. <laughs> right, right, right. i never heard that but that's a really good thing to it's, remember it's 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 I, I always find it funny because, you know, a lot of people, especially the ones I know the most and I talk to the most, they do tend to use digital as a crutch. Yeah. Um, it's And it's not even a bad thing. It's just, you know, you get in that mindset of how do I do this digitally? How do I do this digitally? And sometimes the best answer is you don't. Right, right. You don't, you know. Yeah. The, that's another where the problem too, solving that, comes in. <laughs> yeah, well, another thing, too, that a lot of people are, aren't aware of is it, a couple of years ago when I got my shop bought 2013 to be exact, which is 10, nine years ago. And a buddy of mine's like, I want one. I'm like, well, before you get one, be aware you need a table saw. You need a scroll yeah. saw. You need several bits of, inf- you need several tools to process the material to go onto the machine. He's like, Oh, mm-hmm. I never thought about that. You need a support shop. You can't just get a CNC machine and just expect not to have to cut material down, not to prepare stuff, not to hot glue, not to screw, not to this, not to that. It is, it is, you know, it is funny how many people don't really understand that. They think that they can get all the digital fab stuff and then not have any other tools in their shop and just do everything like, oh, I can cut something in half with a CNC. It's like, I mean, you can, yeah. but you wouldn't want to. It was just, it's, everything takes five times longer. It's like when you're, you know, recording your processes for a video, you know, the process is a 10 minute process and then you've extended it out to an hour by moving cameras around to try to catch every angle of you doing it. It's the yep. same thing. Yep. 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 It's Have, funny because in this digital world, like we, in the last 10, 12 years, everything, videos, digital mm-hmm. fabrications, digital and communications, digital. It's, yeah. it's really amazing. It's really amazing that we've, we're alive for this to see this happening in person. It's really amazing. And it happens so fast. Like I was so watching, fast. I was watching a video. There's a guy that does a lot of 3D printing content on his um, on his YouTube channel, and he had he did a retro mod of an of an original MakerBot 3D printer. And for those of you that are not as familiar as with 3D printing, the MakerBot was literally laser cut plywood, and that was the first the printer. Yeah, they're the like first a, time at Maker Fair, yeah, 2011. That's about yeah, because it came out in 2012. That's it's funny. You so you do remember it, yes. Yeah. Um, those machines are incredible that they ever worked, right? But that <laughs> and you know you go, oh wow, yeah, what was that like 30, 40? That was ten years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah. Now I have a 3D printer that can print religious statues that are an inch and a half tall with so much detail that you can make out it's facial a resin? features. That's a resin print, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a resin print. Since we recorded, I don't know if you got, if I got crunchy, but you got crunchy since, because now we're actually in the bandwidth of recording. Yeah, I think it's going to, I think it crunches down for you and I, like you, yeah. you and I both look like 8-bit video games right now. Which yeah, exactly, because when you held it up, I just assumed it was a resin print because it's yeah. a little blur. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's funny. Like that's 10 years, like what's 10 years from now, you know, and you see where it's going and you see like, um, you know, the SLS machines where they basically shoot a beam of laser, a laser beam into a pile of dust and they fabricate a piece of metal that's floating without support material inside a wad of dust. And it's like, oh yeah, no, then you just shake it off. And all of a sudden you have this complete metal piece. That's not got it's, any supports. And it's, it's like so amazing. I remember <sighs> 10, 15 years ago, maybe, maybe now like 15, 17 years ago, hearing about SLA printing. I forget, yes. Is that the right? Is that the that's, right? That's the, one? that's the resin printing. That's what that's resin printing. But at the time, yeah. remember when it would go down, mm-hmm. it would go the other way. Now it comes out of the liquid. But back in the day when that was, hundred thousand dollar machine mm-hmm. the laser would hit the puddle surface and then it would move down and then it would hit the puddle surface and move down so your object was submerging in the puddle in the big vat as opposed would, to being pulled out of the vat 
it was so cool how 3D printing took two different development paths. So there was um, there's this excellent documentary that I recommend. I think it's still on Netflix called Print the Legend. Mm-hmm. And it's about the founding of 3D printing technology. And, you know, there was Brie Pettis on one side that was doing one thing. And he's, I think, moved on to making um, circuit board fabrication CNCs now. Yeah, he's got um, the little mini mills now. Yes, is, yes. Is that the one? There, there's a, I, I'm, I'm friendly with Brie. I can't call him a friend, but I'm friendly with him. And we have a lot of mutual friends. And he's always been nothing but nice to me. But isn't there was there a documentary where they kind of painted him and they kind of painted him a little sh- in a shitty light a little bit? Is that well, it was it definitely wasn't this one because he was, you know, he was it was interesting because they were going, you know, there was the FDM printers, the filament printers that we all know and love. And most of us have one of at least. And then there was the resin printers. And I think that's the those, that was the conflict. Right. But I don't think anyone was painted particularly badly. But I think oh, it was because I, I, I'm trying to remember. I remember hearing something about him getting. Kind of smeared in a, in a it's totally right possible now. it's totally possible it wasn't that i at least i don't remember him coming off poorly like i remember thinking like oh, that's a pretty cool guy like he look what, no, he, he, what, he, what he did was amazing what he accomplished was amazing and if you go back to those early maker videos early make magazine videos he's in there with like a lab coat doing what i'm doing you know doing yeah. what i was doing making just making stuff simple stuff like in the shop i remember i remember when you got your first 3d printer and you were doing those those old the, those old timey wheels and making tops oh, yeah. <laughs> and you were playing around with it and i had just i had 3d printers for a while at that point but i was pretty much just grabbing stuff off thingiverse and i'm watching you go and i'm like okay look if he can do this <laughs> yes. well it's funny i had again it was one of those things where i just had a spurt like i was like yeah it was in the middle of the winter and somebody had given me a machine maybe creality sent me a machine or something yep, yep. and I was like, okay, and I was dabbling with Fusion 360, which I, I have a love-hate relationship with. I go in and I get out, and I go in and I get out completely. <laughs> and that was a week when I was in Fusion 360, and I was like, I'm going to make an object, export it to the 3D printer, and then see what happens. That was my goal. And that particular day, it was like around New Year's Eve, like five years ago, four years mm-hmm. ago, I was able to 3D print like a cube with a hole through it that I passed through with. In, you know, you'd make a decision in Fusion, you draw a line on something, you draw a circle on something, and then you push it through and cut it out virtually, and then it turns into a 3D print. And for me, that was amazing. It's knowing, you're, you're close to my age, knowing where we came from, yeah. and knowing how unbelievable that is to be able to draw a few lines, and then within minutes, it's a 3D object in front of you. I was just doing a prototype for my day job. Um, I did a prototype. I des- I had to, they needed a 3D render of what we wanted something to look like. So I sent it and my, my, my boss comes over. He goes, hey, I need you to design this. I was like, okay. He goes, just make me a 3D, a 3D version of this. This is kind of what I'm looking for. You do it. Send it to me when it's done. I'm like, oh, crap. Okay. So I jump into Fusion. I make the whole thing. And I'm like, you know, we keep doing this digitally. What if I made a 3D print of it? So right. now sitting in my bag for Monday is a 3D print of this thing. And it's just like the idea that I had this idea in my head. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to spend a couple hours designing something in Fusion. And now I have the actual thing. I mean, I know people compare it to the Star Trek replicators where, you know, they just say, computer, make me this. And the computer spits something out on a table. But, I mean, that really is kind of where we are, even though we're not in like complex machinery yet. Right. You know, it's like maybe that's the next step. It's not going to be the the resolution or the detail level. It's going to be the fact that you'll be able to print machines in place. You right. know, you can well, see it's funny how printing. like the, the object has to come out of resin or mm-hmm. it has to come out of the puddle of resin or it has to be submerged in the resin or the pile of dust or a tube of a, a, a spool of string plastic. Essentially really skinny, hot glue. <laughs> yeah, but it'll be really funny when it just makes it up out of molecules. And it's just like a like a can of gas, for instance. Like you know, you got to connect your three D printer to a can of molecular gas, whatever that molecular gas is, and then that molecular gas becomes an object, and then you really have that that ray gun. Doesn't it feel like we're we're that like that doesn't seem like a ridiculous idea anymore? It does like <laughs> I remember when you you know it's funny when you were talking to you um, when William Osmond was on making it, and you guys were talking, you wanted to build a laser bandsaw. Yeah. And I was laughing my ass off. I'm like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. What the hell is wrong with him? And then, you know, two years later, everybody has a glow for it. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, and I actually did do the laser band. So with the guys from Full Spectrum, mm-hmm. I, I had a relationship with those guys for a little while. And they came up with the parts. And 
my buddy Walker came and we set one up and that was a lot of fun with a foot pedal. So you can step on the foot pedal. We had an old band. So here and we, we modified it <laughs> just cause it was just like a C shape frame. I and I have all that stuff. I have the tube and the, you know, the, the transformer and everything to, to do that. And I've been meaning to do that and I just haven't done it yet. I got to do it. You know, it's, it's funny cause you were, you were a toy designer at one point and seeing, you know, you get this like excitement. There's this like, buzz when you talk about stuff that's really bizarre like out there yeah. <laughs> like i rem- i the laser bandsaw is the one conversation that just really sticks out in my head is like you were just so like yeah we should just do a laser bandsaw and you know and then all of a sudden like wait a minute hold on hold on wait we could do this we could do this and i can almost hear you going like no no this is actually not as dumb as it sounds let's let's do this <laughs> right. and you know you start realizing like actually technically this is not totally impossible to do well, you know what is we got the laser band so going here in the mm-hmm. shop with Walker and his buddy Tim. I think Tim and, and Walker got it going, and then I started experimenting with it. And the one thing it lacked is the CNC ability of a human being. Yeah, it's yeah. it's complete mayhem to stay on the line when there's no resist. I was just gonna no, say there's no feedback when you're pushing it none. through the laser. It just whoosh. <laughs> there's none. And so uh, when you use a real bandsaw, you're feeling the reaction of the blade. Yeah, there's you're deflection. Feeling, it's pushing back at you. It resists you, when you you're push. You're feeling. Through. You're feeling yeah. how hard you're pushing. You feel you're staying on the line because the bandsaw blade. This is one of the techniques I constantly teach everybody when they use a bandsaw. Is the blade, the cutting edge is one part, but the back of the blade is the fin. It's like the rudder of a ship. So mm. you make your cut and you decide which side of the cut you just cut, you're going to rest against the fin. And so you, ah. could, so you could ride that cut. If it's like, if you say you're cutting an outside circle, you use the, you push into the blade. T- I tend to, you push into the blade, you ride that, the, what you just cut gets ridden on the back on of the, the back. blade behind okay. the saw teeth. And you're able to make a nice fair curve without that. There's nothing. You just, you just like, got your complete heartbeat. lateral movement, left, right, forward, backwards. Your heartbeat is showing up in the line because there's nothing. There's nothing. The rest. So if you're laser cutting a straight line, like you could see your heartbeat in the line because like your hands are jolting, or it's just mostly just your nervousness and your shakingness. Yeah. And it's it's, it's uh, well, it's seismograph. It, it's like a seismograph. It's, it's like not, the deflection on the edge of something when you cut a curve, you could see the deflection of the blade. Well, that deflection is on a, something that has a curve that's as thin as a human hair. All right. of a sudden, you're there's getting a lot of those deflections all at once. There's, yeah, and there's nothing there's nothing guiding you except for your own eye-hand coordination, which is really put to the test when you're just looking at a little burn spot and trying to stay on the paper line. I don't think a lot of people have the hand-eye coordination to use a bandsaw, let alone use a laser <laughs> bandsaw. <laughs> So I still have all the parts and to make a laser band sort of something I definitely want to, I want to try again. If you, you know what, it, it almost seems like if you had one and then on the table, you maybe had like a resistive roller system, like the one they use to move packages, like the ones where the package well, you know can go. You would, need, you would need like a little tiny pin that came up out of the thing. So that way you just cut it. The pin would, the material would, but then you wouldn't have the, the, the convenience of the left, right. Yeah, you kind of need that. You need a little bit of left, right, but you need something that's going to slow it down so you don't just glide through, right. I imagine. So maybe like the wheels that like Bob used on the foot of R2-D2, the ones that can roll in both directions, like just right. a table of those, and you can kind of right. tighten them real tight so that they don't wheel easily, that's and a, that would give you the point. same resistance. That's yeah. a good point. There you go. Yeah. I come, I'll come up anytime. I'll help you build this. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> I feel no, like I live up there anyway these days. <laughs> I know. I saw you at Maker Camp the other day. I was so happy to see you. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to go. And I'm not going to lie. I had no intention of going. And Keith Drennan just would not shut up. Um, <laughs> he, he, he wouldn't stop. Like, I mean, so a couple of days before, about a week and a half before Maker Camp, he messages me. He goes, so you're coming to Maker Camp, right? I'm like, no. He goes, no, 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 no. He goes, I can't hear negative responses to that question. So you're you're coming <laughs> he's to Maker been Camp. Such a champion to Maker Camp. He's been so good. He was so right too. And I've told him this like a lot. I actually told him Sunday night after the burn when we were all just kind of chilling in the pavilion afterwards. I was like, You were a hundred percent right. Like this was the smartest thing I ever did. Like I got to meet people. I got to sh- you know, shake hands. It was all a blur. Baby. You came up on Sunday and stayed on Sunday. Did you come up Saturday? And then I Saturday? wasn't there Saturday, which oh, which so by the way. Yeah, I came. I, I was like, I'll go one day. I'll make. <laughs> I'll but it was perfect, though. 
Like it, it was a good day. You to live locally and come and hang out all day Sunday. I think it was great. Yeah, I think next year I'm going to be there all three days because I want to take some classes next year. But I, it's weird because I hear I've heard a lot of people talking about Maker Camp. It's like, what did you do? What did you? I took this class. I did this thing. And it's like, what did you do? I socialized my ass off. That's what I did. Good for you. That's really important in this and, world. And honestly, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to connect with the people who, you know, you. I'll give you a good example. You and Bob and uh, David always talk about people who come up to you and, you know, you don't know who they are, right? right? And I always was like, wow, that's got to be a weird feeling, right? Because I'm like, who the hell am I? No, I'm never going to have that feeling. Like, what's that feeling even like, right? No joke. It happened three times at Maker Camp. And I was like, Wow. Like even, even I can have that moment, you know, and it's just, I'm not bragging. I'm not saying like, look at me, people are coming up to me and I don't even know them. That's honestly, you provide a service. You're very passionate. You're a New Yorker. So I could say this, you're very (laughs) passionate about the things you love and like, and the things you want to share. Yeah. And it's infectious. You know, you, like you and I are New Yorkers. So we have big mouths. So we brag a lot. We boast a lot. And people that listen to the show that might be a little less, uh, braggy and boasty. (laughs) <laughs> get get a chance to hear things that they otherwise wouldn't hear, and then you give them license to go, and you give them the license to go and explore new things. Yeah, and so I, you, know, you you provide a service. You do. I love I love that feeling of people, and it happened most after because we make ended when people were coming yeah. up to me and saying, "Hey, we really loved the podcast. I'm very sorry it's over, but you know, people at Maker Camp would tell me, "I'm so glad you're bringing something back. Like that yeah. podcast was very important." I'm like. But we came on and all we did was talk to cre- other creators. Like we, we weren't like, it wasn't like this revelation of a podcast, but what it was, was it was very human. And I realized like, wow, that's what people want. They just want that conversation. Like, oh, wow, that's more important than what it is, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I listen to a lot of maker podcasts and it's just more of the conversation that's warm and familiar to all of us. To, yeah. to listen to it and you know and especially someone like you that's just passionate about it and, and i am you know the thing, of, <laughs> the thing of the week and you know just being able to just be excited about something and it's infectious so i think that's imp- i think, think that, i think that's important for what we do by the way i think you know as makers i think that's where you can tell the makers who are excited about what they do versus the makers that are just like in a rut of like this is what i do now you know like right. Like I was talking about the laser bandsaw, but you know, there's a lot of stuff you were talking. I loved the Buddha. <laughs> like I was like, it's such a oh, right. silly project, but I love it. You know, so and- you know, it's it's funny. I put out so I put out the Buddha, which was a complete analog. This is mm-hmm. a digital episode. This is a digital show, digital podcast. But this is a that was a non digital <laughs> thing. Sure. And I'll tell you, there was two ways to go with that. Um, Taylor, my my partner for a few years here, was helping me do 3D stuff. Mm-hmm. She's she for her own personal project. She was getting involved with a lot of 3D modeling and then CNC and those 3D things. Mm-hmm. And when we found pictures of the Buddha online, it was like, oh great, we'll just slice it and print those sections and then glue the foam together. And then it got down to it, and our communication was getting a little bit, a little bit more strained. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to jump in and make the Buddha <laughs> out of a pile of styrofoam. Doesn't have to look exactly like it. It's inspired by Buddha. The client doesn't care. They just want this big prop head. And right. I just jumped in and, and and then I got the, why did you do that? I could have set the files up. I'm like, if you wanted to set the files up, you had two months to do it. You didn't do it yet. I didn't <laughs> right. finish the product. And so I went complete analog and I got lots of kudos for that. They're like, well, you could have seen seed this. You could have taken the easy way out. You took the hard way out. That's what I noticed about and, it. That's why I loved it so much. And I didn't, I I film everything. If it goes bad, I just don't ever tell anybody I filmed it. <laughs> but <laughs> it was in a good direction. And I could proudly post a video and say, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, look, I can carve. I didn't know if I could carve or not. I, I mean, I can. I know I can. But is it going to look like a, a Buddha-ish? Is it going to look given like Given enough a time. Picture? Given so, enough time, anything yeah. will look like what it's supposed to look like, right? right. It's, right. It's, it's, and then being really, you got to also be, and I learned this from my drawing teacher, you have to be really honest with yourself and look mm-hmm. at it and go, okay, this does not look like this. Why doesn't it look like this? And you really start like looking through, and I, I said this to, to Bob a few months ago, look through a paper tube at a project. And this way you stop being distracted by everything around those little tiny moments of those little yeah. isolated moments. So I'm like looking at how his lip relates to his cheek and how the tip of his nose relates to the bottom of the lip and how the eye re- relates to the, this and the eye socket and the big rosy cheeks. So I really had to do that. And I didn't hit it 100%, but I didn't have to based on you the didn't, pictures. Yeah, you have to be a... Just, which is something we found on Thingiverse. And that was the one we were going to maybe print. 
or rather CNC in sections. But I, you have to be within a certain percentage. It's funny yeah. you say that about you know looking through a tube because the advice I got when I was really trying to get better with Procreate and getting better at drawing and mm -hmm. I want to I want you know because I do a lot of customization of my wood projects and jewelry projects for customers and I really want to be able to make my own artwork for them. You know, if a customer says they want this, that, and the third. I want to be able to either draw it or at least digitally approximate it so in such a way that it's like, oh, someone can't just go on like SBG bundles and buy this. They can like. Like, oh, that's a unique piece of art on my project. So I was drawing, I was drawing the character from cartoon, the tick right. and I drew him and he goes, that is probably the best thing you've drawn so far. He goes, you didn't have a template sitting underneath. I'm like, no, I drew this from scratch. He's like, that came out really good. He goes, I'm going to tell you a way to make it even better. Okay. He goes, the next time you want to draw anything from a model, take what you drew and turn it completely upside down. Like, especially human faces. He said, if it's a human face, turn it upside down. And if you look at it upside down and it still looks right, then you nailed it. If it doesn't look right, you're going to see every imperfection when that's it's upside down. Yeah, and I'm like, wow, that's kind of crazy. You're and kind of turning an emotion into a mechanic. Yeah. And he, he literally, so I did it and I'm like, oh yeah, look, that doesn't match. That doesn't work. That, and it's weird because when you're not your brain perceives the whole when it's the right way up. Right. But it doesn't perceive it when it's upside down because now you're taking in the individual parts more likely than you were when it was right side up. It's fascinating. It's like that is the mind of someone who has done a lot of art over the years because you don't get to that you don't get to that solution from matching things up. Yeah. From a book. You get that from someone who's like yeah, no, I've done this for like 30, 40 years. I know what I'm doing. Here's the right. trick. <laughs> right, right. And can we talk about Procreate for a minute? Oh, a hundred percent. I love Procreate. Procreate is? It's insane. I'll it's tell you insane. a funny story. So me and Jocko were going, I think we were going to Europe together or Atlanta, I forget. So sit next to Jocko on a plane and he breaks out his iPad. And I've seen people drawing with the iPad and the pen. And I, in my mind, I'm like, I'll never need that. Why do I need that? I could draw a pen of paper, right? I didn't realize all the attributes that Procreate had. Mm -hmm. And so I'm um, sitting next to Jocko and I'm kind of like eyeballing, like kind of looking down at his lap while he's drawing something. He was actually drawing the flashlight. So this was several years ago. And uh, and I'm looking down at what he's drawing and I watch him draw a line and I watch it snap straight. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in the middle of flying and we both have our headphones on and I'm supposed to be looking at my phone, reading something, but I'm kind of eyeballing what he's doing. And then I watch him draw another line and I watch it snap straight. I'm like, okay, I see what's going on here. I never knew that any of that. And I didn't stop and ask him anything about it. I just said, okay, when I get a chance, I'm going to go to the Apple store and play with this thing. Mm -hmm. And ultimately that's what I did. And then I ended up buying a iPad Pro and the pen. I haven't been able, I have, I, I live with someone that constantly rearranges the house. I don't <laughs> live with that anymore, but I live with someone that constantly rearranged the house and certain things go missing forever. And I just, I think to myself, I guess I'm just never going to use that anymore because I have no idea where it went. <laughs> and my Apple pen was one of those things. So I've been missing my Apple pen for about six months. It's somewhere <laughs> in a drawer. Somebody decided it needed to not be attached to my Apple book anymore. So. <laughs> it's, that I'll is the one, one, that is the one app. That is the one. So I have, I, I always, every five years I buy myself a new laptop. It's the one thing that I know I'm going to need. It's the one thing I know I need to keep up to date because I use it for a lot. I use yeah. my laptop probably more. My desktop is basically what I use for podcasting at this point um, and maybe some light game playing. But for the most part, my laptop is my main computer. So I bought a brand new Surface Laptop Studio, the high-end model with yeah. the new pen, the new uh, Microsoft um, pen. Oh, cool. I, spent, I spent an insane amount of money. I think I spent like 2300 bucks on it. Because I know I'm going to keep that for five years. It's worth it for me to overinvest at the beginning, knowing I'm going to get five, six years out of it. And the one damn thing that I still use my iPad for is Procreate. Because no matter how good that laptop is at everything, even Adobe Fresco, which is about as close to Procreate as you're going to ever get without using Procreate, it's just not as good. Is it's Procreate just not an Adobe program? I always thought it was. It's not. No, Procreate is not an Adobe program. Well, That's the I don't crazy know why part. I thought that was. I just assumed it was. I was wrong. It's the one app that every Adobe lover, myself included, resents the fact that Adobe didn't come up with because it's like because if it came out from Adobe, it would be on another platform. And I wouldn't have to have an iPad for one app. <laughs> right. 
So who but owns Procreate? Is that an Apple? Program? It's just their own company. They're their own company. They um, have Pro- it's Procreate one is company. Independent. Yeah, it's an independent can use, company. Can you use Procreate on a, a, a on a Windows? Nope. What nope. The closest Windows? thing. So you the closest thing you can get on yeah the closest thing you can get on a surface is Adobe Fresco and okay. it's it's close like they're getting better and you know how Adobe is they're just going to copy everything Procreate can do until they're doing all the same stuff but they're not in the phase where they have feature parity yet and not for nothing but Apple's Pen is just amazing like it's like it's responsive it's it draws straight lines which a lot of the Windows and Mac based stuff does not. You know, it's just, it's a fantastic program and it's easy to use. There's no interface clutter. There's no interface. It's just, you got to know how to do everything. <laughs> it's buried. Everything's buried. It's all taps and gestures and, t- and okay, cool. I'll learn yeah. it. Well, that's it. But, Everything's buried. You got to find, I remember being able to take a photograph and lay it under a, a layer and then mm-hmm. draw it. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. It's mind. It's basically like onion skinning. What we would have done in art school. A hundred percent. You know, 100%. but it's it's just it's unbelievable. And then when you see someone like, for instance, something popped up the other day. Somebody drew a nose. They erased the nose off of a perfectly beautiful <laughs> model to show how to draw a nose. How to properly draw a nose? Yeah, they start and with it, a triangle, and it's like, don't do it this way. Do this. <laughs> so Wild. Rob, Rob is uh, is asking me questions. Rob Rojas. Ah. No in love. Rob used to live five minutes from me, and I only saw him one time in our neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, he told me. I didn't realize you guys were so close. Isn't that great? I've seen him more by your house than by his house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't live there anymore, so, you know. Yeah, he's asking. He's looking for a tool. He's working at the shop. He comes up on the weekends and works Saturday and Sunday for me. That's great. He's, he's a hard he's, kid. He's, he's awesome. He's, I, 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 I'll tell you what. The, 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 orbit, the orbit of people around you is amazing. I remember um, when I last year when I came up for Jimmy Speedway, which it wasn't called Jimmy Speedway last year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you know I came remember up with that uh, uh, bra- uh, Pat Reynolds, the electrician. Fantastic. Came. He kept calling it Jimmy Speedway, like hashtagging Jimmy Speedway when he would post <laughs> like a guy in the desert on like a pulse jet going to Jimmy Speedway. Yep. <laughs> so that's how that hashtag started. So that's Patrick's doing. I was. Um, I was so nervous. I mean, you joked with me when I came up this year. You're like, hey, you didn't turn around this year. I was like, yes, I did not turn around. But (laughs) I was so nervous. I'm like, I don't know anyone. The only person I have a shot, like I knew Keith would be there. I know Keith Deason pretty well. Um, I know Dave pretty well. And that was it. I was like, God, if I go up there and they're not there right away, what the hell am I supposed to do for a couple hours, right? You know, like you, this is the other thing we love about the maker community. And, you know, we, and I have to keep your mind on myself and I know you do too. You, it's we're like six year olds in a playground. You're like, yes. so what do you do? Yeah. I, oh, what do what do you, you know? V- almost never is there that judgment. Nothing. Almost never is there like, oh, you know, you're wearing weird clothes. I'm not going to hang out with you. It's almost <laughs> like, oh, you're wearing weird clothes. Get over here. Let's let's do. You know, it's like what what, uh, what Berkey says. You know, you're weird. I like you're weird. You. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember. Uh, I remember pulling up. I remember yeah. pulling up, and the first person I see is you, and I'm like. <laughs> Oh shit! Of all the people to bump into right away, I bump into Jimmy first. Like, right. okay, this isn't too awkward. And you just came over like we were old friends. And I'm like, we've never even met. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, and I'm for five seconds. I'm the most important person in the room. But then you did something that was amazing. That? You took me into you took me onto the track and you started introducing me to people. And that's how I met Jeremy. Um, uh, and it oh, was yeah, like Jeremy Forrester. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, oh my God, I started meeting all these people. And by the yeah. end of the night, I'm sitting around, I'm just having a conversation, having the best time ever. I met Justine that day. Yeah. I met, um, obviously I met you. I right. met, you know, I got to see Keith. I haven't, was I hadn't Gra- seen was Keith. There in there. Weekend? Derek was uh, there yeah. Weekend? Yeah. Graz was there. Everybody was there. Cause you, you guys had just wrapped up. We wrapped the show the day before, which is why yeah. I didn't promote that particular event heavily because i was like oh, hopefully we don't have to shoot that day because i would have oh had to be like all right everyone can go and hang out on the racetrack i won't be there but, but uh, I, thankfully I had a, I had it a was wild man i gotta tell you that was one of the that was the event i'm not even gonna lie that was the event that made me feel like it would be okay to go to maker camp oh, because great. it was like it was like oh i've met enough people and i can meet new people like okay and then going back this year going back to jimmy speedway and seeing yeah. a whole bunch of people that i saw the year before i was like hey how you been everything's cool you know yeah. we were chatting i was chatting with people and one guy came up to me i don't remember 
exactly who it was, but he came up to me. He's like, hey, after I saw you last time, I started listening to your podcast. He goes, I've been listening for a year. I love it. I'm like, Whoa. Was that Art? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess it might have been Art Clement. Art is a big part of the movie. Oh, no. Art Art and I have had a lot of comments. Art's another one. Like It's yeah. like, yeah. And um, Chris, um, Alchemist 1964, Chris yep. Yep. actually yep. came up to me at one point. He goes, hey, man, because I had the drone flying over the track a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And at one point, he goes, he goes, hey, man, I just wanted to thank you. You're the only one that got a picture of my daughter. Aww, I'm like, aw. That's cool. I was like, that's so nice. Like, yeah, I didn't. You know. He's another one too, who just like, like the way you just got over the fear of just saying, screw it. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Yeah. Chris got over his fear of being like a little awkward socially only because he's just like, I don't know anybody, but you know what? I do know everybody because we but talk online all the time. We're all and, awkward socially yeah. when you, and, and you know, it's funny. You, you hear that and everyone says that, right. But you don't appreciate it until you start bumping into people and you meet them at these events and you're like, Oh wow, we're kindred spirits. Like none of us are comfortable right now. So we could all just be uncomfortable together and all of a sudden that <laughs> creates comfort. <laughs> it's freaking yep. fantastic. A hundred percent. Do you um obviously you're gonna have it you're gonna have it again next year. Have you are you surprised by the kind of traction that's I mean, look, let's let's just call a spade a spade here. You put your name on anything, it's gonna get a lot of people's attention. But are you surprised that it's become the event that people look forward to every summer? I mean the go-kart thing, I, you know what? It's so it's so much fun because this year's the first year, so three years in a row. This is the first of the previous two. First one was COVID, so nobody knew mm -hmm. what to expect. Second one was the TV show that we were working on. And the third one was free and clear. And so I was able to make a go-kart, participate, jump in. And and I know because of Art and Jeremy and a few other guys that put, of course, Patrick, who like, we're doing this. Yeah. Whether you want to or not, we're doing this. So it's kind <laughs> of, it's, it's snowballing now. And all I did was just push the first handmade snowball off the edge you know now it's snowballing <laughs> and next year we talked about it and anybody who's listening to this can come next summer it's going to be within a week within a week of july 4th mm -hmm. i wanted july 4th but everyone gets mad at me because they have family stuff to do and they can't make it so it'll be within a week of july 4th either the week before or the week after maybe the week before because it's kind of building up Sure. It's like, you know, the excitement, like right after July 4th, it's like, okay, now we're in the summer. It's like a little bit less of like a buildup. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's the week weekend before July 4th is what I'm thinking. Bring a go-kart. And the theme this year is wood. Make a I love completely it. wooden go-kart or bring a metal go-kart with wooden wheels. Bring a metal go-kart with a wooden engine. Bring a wooden go-kart with a metal engine. Just have fun with it. It doesn't mean, there's no rules. It doesn't matter. It's just a day to hang out and I share would love experiences. To see. I'd love to see someone do a motorized soapbox derby car. Like that would just be the <laughs> greatest <laughs> thing ever. If anyone That's did a that, great idea. If any look, I haven't driven any of the carts around the track on any of the visits. I enjoy just mingling with people and I yeah. like taking pictures and in, being in the moment and meeting people. But That's man, it. if somebody made that, I would love to drive it. Like that would get me on the track. <laughs> the, the best thing about this year, and, and I'm sure it's going to be the theme, is everybody. Everyone's like we're all like middle aged men smiling and laughing. Yes. And there's, you know, there's a few girls come and hang out, a few wives and girlfriends and some kids. Some, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Chris brought his daughter and she had an amazing time. Uh, but it's just, you know, us old farts laughing like kids, which is. And nobody uh, getting hurt. Nobody <laughs> getting hurt. Uh, yeah. We've had three years in a row. Thankfully, nobody gets hurt. And I think the craziest really thing fun. for me was um, at one point, somebody put their sticker on the table by the food. And then within like an hour, there were like 50 different stickers out yeah. on the table. And I'm like, there's a lot of freaking people here this year. <laughs> like yeah. the first year I remember, cause I pulled in and I was like, oh, I can pretty much park wherever the hell I want. And I just parked up against the fence. And this year I came in, I'm like, where the hell am I going to park? And I actually just yeah. ended up blocking you in. I'm like, well, I know he ain't going anywhere. So I'll just yeah. get behind Jimmy. I told this story on my podcast, but this kid, Warren works, I guess his name is Warren. I don't know. I wish I could tell mm -hmm. his whole name, but he's a sweet dude. Oh, he's he awesome. He hopped out of his white van. He got out of his van and walked over and just goes, can I hug you? I was like, sure. And he hugged me. And I don't want to cry now, but he said, I got to be careful. Hold on. He just said, you changed my life. And it was really sweet of him to say that. He said, you know, with your podcast and just encouraging words, he said, I have my own business now. And he goes, I that's amazing. If I would have done it as fast as I did if I wasn't listening to what you guys were pushing. And it was the best. It was just that's so sweet. And, and he showed up with a go kart that he, a uh, mini bike that he made, and some other stuff that he made. And he just jumped right in. It's as if he always belonged, which was fantastic. I know, I know it's gotta, and I know you've talked about it to some extent in the past. But does it ever hit you sometimes? It's like 
me doing what I love and following my dream is encouraging other people to follow theirs. Like, it's not just a matter of like, Jimmy says, this is the cool thing to do. It's like, no, look, Jimmy's following his dreams. Hey, I'm going to follow mine too. Like, it's like, it's 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 almost like you're doing it by example. But it reverberates, honestly, it reverberates because when I first started doing YouTube and, and I could make anything on the band. So I could make anything on the table. So it's within limits. And then, I would say like, oh, I don't need to bring it back to the theme of the show. I'm like, I don't need a CNC machine. But then I said, I'm depriving myself and my audience if I continue to avoid that subject. Right. And so that's a good example where I jumped in to fulfill what I need to do, learn new things, and to encourage people to learn new things. And then when I see somebody out there with a laser, I'm like, so this is where I say it reverberates. Yeah. So it's, it's really, it's, it resonates back and forth. You know, people get excited to try new things because of what I'm doing. And I get excited to try new things because of what I see the audience doing. I'm, I'm always amazed at how open you are about how you learn from the people that are quote, I hate to use the word following because it sounds like you're a cult leader, but Mm -hmm. the people that follow you and you always, you always give credit where it's due. And one of the things that you do on making it that it's just like, wow, this is like, he, he realizes what he can do for people. When you shout out somebody, mm-hmm. that wave of recognition from you is a powerful thing, especially when you're someone who's like, I don't belong here. Or somebody that has, you know, the typical imposter syndrome that we yeah. all have. And, yeah. you know, like, there's the godfather. Sorry, you just are. But there's the godfather <laughs> going, no, Jimmy just yeah. recognized what I'm doing. He said, this is cool. You know, this is, I must be doing something right if he says yeah. this is cool. <laughs> right. Is that, I mean, I know you're, you're a humble guy. And I, I've gotten to know you over the last couple of years. And it's like, I've understand you're a humble guy. You'll, I don't know how comfortable you are saying it, but does it ever hit you? Like, wow, well, you I know, can make someone's life by just shouting them out. Like, I don't have to do a lot. I just have to recognize what they're doing. Well, you know, a, a little, a little acknowledgement goes a long way. And I learned that yes. being a teacher, you know, I was a college teacher at the school of visual arts for 23 years, 24 mm-hmm. years, maybe I forget from 2000, 90, 93 to 2017, however many years that is. So seeing somebody bring something in for the first time that they've never tried and then giving mm-hmm. them acknowledgement and letting them know that they did a good job and that they're not a failure is tremendous. And I remember getting that from the teachers that I appreciated and that inspired me. Those are the teachers you remember. A hundred percent. And you know, I'm not going to blow smoke up somebody's ass. If they do a shitty job, I'm like, Hey, you were in the right ballpark. (laughs) You got to do this. Or I, I had no problem blasting a student. I said, you got a lot of fucking talent and you're (laughs) wasting it by drinking all night long, goofing off, not taking yourself serious. I go, you have a lot of talent and you're wasting it. You know, so I never had any problem doing either one. And then they it, have the students that don't care about what they do, don't care about anything around them. And then you just, you, you, you can't do anything, but just kind let of them let, them, let them coast, let them, coast. Let them go yeah. through the class. I'm like, yeah. whether I fail you or pass you, it doesn't, it's not going to have any, I go, you want to pass? I would look right at him. I go, you want to pass? You can pass. I don't care. I go, you got to live it yourself. I you had that. Phony faker your whole life. Go ahead. Do it. I had that teacher. I had that teacher in high school, my senior year of high school. I've told this story, but my senior year of high school, I took jewelry, jewelry making and manufacturing. And why did I take the class? I took the class to meet girls. I had no intention of paying any attention (laughs) in this class. I took the class to meet girls. And you know what I'm going to tell you up front? A lot of guys had the same idea and no (laughs) girls had that idea. So I, it was just a sausage fest in the classroom. So what did I, you know, instead of being distracted by all the pretty girls, I was actually I actually got into it. Like I really enjoyed it. And I got to a point in my, in my last, in my senior year of high school where I was doing, I was actually doing the programs for all the school events. I was designing them as a student. That's what I was doing. I was working directly for the principal. She would say, this is what we need. Here's the list of students, make the program. Right. Okay, cool. And I was doing that so regularly. And then the graduation program and the award ceremony program came up and I'm like, but I have jewelry class. And, you know, the assistant principal's like, don't worry, we'll get you, we'll get you. I said, yeah, but my final project is due. And I'm beg, I'm thinking in my mind, like, don't take me away from this. The one thing I look forward to in the entire school day, don't take this away from me. (laughs) And you took it as a joke. And, and he's like, he's like, yeah, no, 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 we'll get you out of it. And so I went to my teacher 
And I said, I want to finish my final project. He goes, you don't have to finish your final project. You, you, you're going to get a perfect grade in this class. You've done excellent work. You obviously care about it more than a lot of the people in the class. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I want to finish my final project. <laughs> like it meant that much to me, this goofy class. And I was like, I'll never use this in my real life, but I really want to do well here. Like this is become something that's important to me. Turns out it took me 30 some odd years, but I ended up getting back into jewelry making. Great. And it's like, but it's because that guy was such a good teacher and he was okay with me just doing my best, but I wanted to do even better. I wanted to impress him. I wanted to work hard for that guy. Right. And I remember that teacher and I've tried to reach out to, I think I found him on Facebook and I tried a few times. He's much older now, obviously. I mean, I graduated high school in 94. Right. So he's much older at this point. It, he probably doesn't even know how to use Facebook. He just has an account like most boomers do, and that's fine. <laughs> but it's just, you know, I really, really, I understand what you're saying, though. That acknowledgement goes a long way. You know, him, I almost was like, I om it's almost like take the win, dude. But then he said, you've done such great work. And I'm like, well, hell, if you think I've done great work, wait till you see my final project. I want right. to show it to you. Well, I want to prove That's it, the you. encouragement. And the encouragement, again, to use the same term, it reverberates. It's because it's like, wow, I did good. I want to keep doing good. Yeah. I want to, it, I want it, to keep showing how I can improve. It's like when you, know, when you get a shout out about your podcast or your YouTube channel. It's like, oh, God, I have to start producing content now. Right. Like I can't, I can't do a half-assed job on this anymore. I can't phone it in. People are watching now. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So I always have – I've had those moments it. a lot. I've had those moments a lot over the years where it's like somebody shouts you out and it's like all of a sudden you get more downloads on a specific episode and you're just like, <gasps> uh oh, like, and you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to change anything next week, but you still have this in the back of your mind. Like all of a sudden you have a lot more eyeballs on you, you know, like, oh, I better pay better attention to what I'm doing. So, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, like I said, that's what's good about this community is that mm -hmm. we all get inspired by each other. We do. Whether you're, whether you're a content creator or a content observer, and everybody in one way or another is, if you're, if you're f going back and forth, you might not say create a YouTube video, but mm -hmm. you're posting on Instagram, you're a content creator. Yeah. You're creating stuff that inspires the people that follow you. If you have a few hundred followers, or if you have a few thousand or tens of thousands of followers, you're inspiring somebody to get started. Imagine a room, you know, I always, this is the greatest analogy. This, you know, like if you've ever, if you've ever worked in corporate America, which I still do, my day job is still technically a corporate America type job. It's like go into a room to give a presentation and put 50 people in that room. Right. That feels like a lot of people. Right. Now let's say you have a thousand followers on Instagram, go into that same room, put a thousand people in that room. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's a plane. That's a plane full of people, a thousand right. people. Right. Now go in that room and let's say you have 3,000 people. Now you just have three flights out of JFK at peak rush hour, <laughs> right. full of people watching your stuff. Right. And the numbers, I mean, you know, 3,000, you know, in the world of people getting 10 million, 100 million people following them, 3,000 doesn't sound like a lot, but sometimes your circle is that number. And that is a big, big number. Like just. Yeah visualize the DMV with 500 people in it and you feel like you're never going to get out. You have six times that sitting there listening to your every word. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the power of social media these days. Yeah. Is there any particular piece of technology in your shop that you just think is the coolest thing? I have an idea what you're going to say. I should write it down, but it's not like you're going to be able to read it because you're we're on 8-bit mode in our video connection here. But I have a feeling I know what you'll say, but is there a particular tell me what piece? You think I'll say. I'll tell you if you're right. I think you're going to say your plasma table. I am. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> because, because it's the one thing that I never hear anyone geek out. About. I mean, obviously, I don't run in the metal circles that you do, but no. I had a feeling that that would be the machine that you would well, just I say lose it all your the time, over. And I started saying it. Now I hear a couple of other guys saying it. Mm -hmm. And I heard somebody on a on completely unattached from me say it one day. And I was like, whoa. So the, the feeling is there. Is, <laughs> I say it's, it's like having special powers. It's yeah. literally like having special powers like a, a superhero. Super, it's like a superhero power. It's like, oh, I can cut a letter out of a piece of half-inch thick steel. <laughs> Crazy. And, and, you know, all it takes is a little bit of preparation, a little computer work, five minutes of computer work, pull that chip out, stick it in the machine, put a piece of steel on and boom, you got that shape in solid steel. 
that you could have hand sawed, you could have filed, you could have scraped and bent and snapped. It would have taken you hours yeah. to get that same shape. But now you have it in a matter of minutes. How it much of unbelievable. You, that machine, your plasma cutter is from Lincoln, right? Yep. I work with okay. Lincoln. I'm, I'm a Lincoln sponsor. Well, so that's, so that's what I was going to ask. And, uh, you know, I don't mean this question to sound as out of line as it's coming off in my head. So I, you, but you know me well enough to know how I mean it. How much of your passion do you think you, your passion projects, would you have pursued without the relationships that you have? Oh, 100%. like, would you, I, would you I, have I've been so lucky? I've been so, right. so, so lucky. Like, okay. I wouldn't buy a $25,000 plasma cutter if somebody didn't hand me one. Okay. Make sure you just do cool things with this for us. Okay. But now it's at a point now where if I had to give this up or if I needed a new one and it was only, I think my only option was to buy one, I'd have to be like, all right. Do I really need one? <laughs> no, I'm going to knuckle under and buy one because the ability yeah. to have okay. it, you know, maybe I wouldn't buy this particular one. Maybe I'd buy one that was smaller, less, less expensive. Maybe I'd buy a used one. I almost bought a used one from somebody in the community gotcha. when I didn't know that I was going to go forward with this particular company. But, you know, we've have, con you have a contract and the contract goes through a certain length. And then when you get to the end of the contract, you go, Oh, I hope you still love me because I love you. We got to <laughs> this relationship. And then sometimes people say, Hey, you know, it, it just, it, it was I good while it lasted, but it's time to move get on. What I expected out of this, have a nice life and I'll get, keep the tools, have a good day. And then it's up to me to show them or not if they don't care. And so that's happened in this, in this 10 years that I've been doing this, but with Lincoln electric and, uh, you have shop bot, you have Lincoln, shop electric. bot, uh, uh -huh. shop bot, uh, Tormoc, uh, and, uh, full spectrum. Ameribay, Ameribraid also. Ameribraid, this, yeah. yeah. All these guys. Ameribraid, I, the relationship started with them because I was doing knife classes and I was mm -hmm. posting some knife classes and I needed like at least I had two grinders from Beaumont that I bought brand new that I owned. I, I actually bought one used, but I paid almost full price because it was brand new, lightly used. And then I bought one new. So though I bought those full price basically. And then when I called Ameribraid and I was like, hey, I'll give you some social media exposure. They didn't know me. But they were so nice. They said, "We'll give you, uh, we'll give you four machines at, you know, maybe forty percent off." Wow. Maybe they, you know, nominal. I don't want to say they gave me a fifty percent discount because it was a little more than that, less than that. But and they gave me lots of accessories. They were so. And then once they started realizing the feedback they were getting from the fans and the Instagram and the other people that took the class, because. People left the class like I'm going to buy an Amero break because just and they're going to buy the same machine. Yeah, that's the interesting. Yeah. Like they take people that take classes. I learned this very early on. When you take a class, I want to know what this equipment is because that's what I want to buy when I start doing this. So and, it's funny. Uh, that. It's funny you say so. Amero break. I didn't have a lot of communication with them, and I know them well now. But mm -hmm. at the time. Then one day I get a box from a Marabraid. I'm like, what is this? I open it up and it's a stand that they sell for like a thousand dollars. I'm like, oh, they sent me oh, wow. two stands to put under two of the machines again. I'm like, oh wow, this is amazing. And then like this, and then like, hey, did you get the package? I'm like, yeah, thanks, man. The packages were heavy, right? I didn't know what they were. And then basically this was about a year and a half ago or a year ago. They're like, hey, we sent you some stuff in the mail. It should be there any minute. You get like 15 packages from them. <laughs> And it turns out to be two grinders. They send them in separate boxes, the wheels, the stands, the feet, and they all come in separate boxes because one box would be too heavy. Of and course. They send me two brand new, beautiful grinders. They're like, we know you promote our machines a lot. These are our new styles. We're not selling the old one anymore. So we know you give us a lot of exposure. So we just use these machines instead. You know, That's keep the old ones, but if you're going to highlight them, just highlight these new machines for us. Well, Amazing. I'm just going to say this. If anyone from Ameribraid is actually listening to this, <laughs> the only reason I know the name is because Jimmy mentioned them. So I, I had no idea because I'm not in the space, right? right? But I know that like if I was looking for a grinder, there's, you know, yours and the one that Brian House makes. Like that's, right. yep. that's yeah. those are the two I'd look at. Like I, those are the ones I know. I know the people. Like it's a brand yeah. I trust. The people I trust, trust them. Good enough for me. So yeah, that's great. And then like you, you brought up Lincoln Electric. I never would have bought. Well, go back. Let me go back. So Lincoln, just before I started YouTube, I wanted to learn how to, I wanted to be a better welder. And so mm -hmm. I, I saw all, all these motorcycle shows early in the 20s, in the 2000s. <laughs> no way. Yeah, and you're I, that close to, you're that close to the Tuttles. I mean, they're in, yeah. they're like right Orange there. County, yeah. I yeah. never did meet them, but I, I wanted to learn how to TIG weld. I'm like, I want to learn this method of welding where people like take this calm approach and they're holding two things in one in each hand. I, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this. So I went to the welding store and I bought a TIG welder. I spoke to the guy behind the counter. He's like, you could buy this. And oh, and so I bought a DC TIG welder. I didn't know. I bought a, 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 I bought a, a Miller TIG welder. 
Mm-hmm. And as I'm leaving the store, he goes, you realize that's only for welding steel. You can't weld aluminum with that. And I didn't know. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. I knew that. And then I went home like, what is it? I thought I could weld everything with this. I gave it <laughs> DC welders only for steel. And then that means I had to buy an AC DC welder. So then I go back and I, so I go back in there like six months later. He's like, how's the weld? I'm going, the welder's going good, but we got a, we got a job where we need aluminum. He's like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So I look at some machines. I did some research and I ended up buying a, a Precision 225 Lincoln welder. This mm-hmm. is like my first like three months on YouTube. And I didn't even know how to use the machine. I brought it home. I plugged it in. I didn't know what I was doing with it. I, I didn't even know enough to look on YouTube to figure out how to use it. Then I finally found, uh, uh, I can't even remember his name. He had a welding channel and he faded. He, he, he disappeared. He got kicked off because he started going Trumpy on everybody. He started going to this whole direction of Trump. Um, what the hell was his name? I can't remember his name. Anyway, he started showing the, the Precision 225. And mm-hmm. And then I started learning from him and then one thing led to another and then I got contacted. I forget how I met Lincoln, but when I met them, I can't remember how I met them. Craig, Craig from Lincoln, he doesn't work there anymore, but Craig was a huge supporter of mine. But we met just by chance and he sent me a machine and I'm like, oh, I already have a Lincoln welder. And he's like, no, no, this is the machine we want to promote. And so I started promoting that machine. Nice. Anyway, that's how the relationship developed. Unfortunately, he got uh, let go because he had a dispute over marketing. And now there's new people there that are handle, handle me. Uh, Craig and I are still friends. He's somewhere else. But he gave me a chance. Craig was, uh, it was really, it was really nice of him to give me a shot and start supporting me. And then other YouTubers as well. Laura, Jocko, uh, April, many other people. There's so, so many people. It's it's weird because the the way I found you, the way I found you was because I saw your logo in Bob's shop and in Laura's shop, and it was just like your logo was freaking everywhere, all over their shops. And I'm like, who the hell is this Duresta guy? So I go to your channel, and you were making. I always tell people this is the first video of yours that I watch was the Brock Lesnar uh, chest tattoo. Oh yeah, sword. yeah. I'll tell you a funny story about that. Oh sure, absolutely. Because that's my that's my introduction to the world of Jimmy Daresta. So wait, I just have to take a break because uh, I'm here in the shop with the one and only Wesley Treat. Wesley, what, he's asking. No me, way, what, what, Wesley. What did you ask me? Did you you're asking me a question? Uh, Chucky oh, that's right. <laughs> Chuck, he's he's listening to me. Chucky 2009 is the welder. That's why. Oh, I nice. Remember. Yeah, Chucky. Yeah. Unfortunately, we lost Chucky. Oh, the, tell uh, Wesley I said hello. The, by the, the way, Maga world. But uh, <laughs> Vincent Ferrari says hello. <laughs> Yes, Wesley's here. We're making this giant sign. It's coming out incredible. It's going to have neon and everything, and, and it's going to say "All Makers Welcome." It's going to be amazing. oh, it's great. And I saw the um, you had a you had a still of it in your stories. That big white arrow with the yeah, yeah, yeah. How that tall is it? It's twelve feet long. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> but you a- you asked me a question about something before we got diverted. Ah, it's okay. It's, it's no. Ask me. I want to know. I want to know. I don't you're... remember what I asked you. To be honest, <laughs> oh, we gotta rewind and play. It's all good. It's all good. Um, oh no, I started to say that that's how I found you, and I was. You said you had a story about the Brock Lesnar chest tattoo. Oh, the Brock yeah. Lesnar's son-in-law reached out to me a couple. Of no months way. And said I want to buy the sword for my father-in-law. <laughs> no. Said, yeah. Did, said, you still have it? I do. It's it's hanging on the wall in the shop. Did and you? He said he goes. I'll buy it from you. And I said I, and I laughed. I go. T-, he goes. I'll name a price. Name a price, I'll buy it from you. And I said five thousand. He says that's too much. <laughs> so, All right. So clearly, he doesn't understand how much custom swords go for. I mean, like it, it's 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 nothing special. Like the tattoo. No disrespect to Brock Lesnar. The tattoo is kind of like it's like cartoony looking. And so is the sword. The sword. It's over cool. the top. That's the yeah. whole point, right? Like that's the whole point. But yeah, yeah no, I, It's funny because yeah, I was like this Duresta guy must be somebody in our. Like I didn't know. I hadn't found you yet. I found a lot of the people that. It were in your orbit. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go check this guy out. And what's interesting is you actually talked about this with Justin. And I was so fascinated by this. The story of how your videos were just sped up um, time-lapse type videos with no music and just chipmunk sounds. And I'm like, I never knew there was actually a story. I just thought like, ah, this is just Jimmy's style. But I didn't know how you came to be the no music, chipmunk sounds, whatever shop sounds at high speed type guy. That's a fantastic story. You want to just Recap. Well, I, I can't remember exactly what I said in the Justin video, but if if my memory serves me, I started making. I knew I wanted to make a video like maybe one a week or maybe mm-hmm. one every other week, and that meant I had to do a lot of editing. And mm-hmm. a lot of guys were doing this like on camera chatting them up, and that 
on camera chatting them up takes too long to make a video. And plus it's annoying. I don't like, I don't want to watch you talk. I don't, you know, wrangle a star. He stands and talks at the camera for hours. He talks a and, lot. Cody and, talks you know, a lot. And he's, 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 I respect Cody. He's come a long way in these last few years and he's, and I tell you what, he's making, he's making good content and people watch it. And, yes. but he talks a lot. He's a very preachy and I never wanted to be preachy. He's preachy mm -hmm. and people love him for that. You know, so yep. he has his audience for being preachy. Cause that's what they go there for. That's right. what they expect from him. I and they're getting what they expect. preachy and I never wanted to be so how to -y. My mm -hmm. whole thing was look what I'm doing. You could do it too without having to be told because that's how I was taught. I even said it. Many times in my podcast, I don't like reading a lot. Just show me what to do. Don't say anything. Just show mm -hmm. me what to do. Don't over, don't mansplain me. Just show me what to do. <laughs> show me once and then let me have my own experience with it. Right. And then I'll figure it out. And that's how I learned my whole life. That's how I learned everything. That's why my last video with firing tiles, I did everything wrong. But people like gently reminded me in the comments, you did it wrong, but hey. It's great that you're trying something. And I'm yeah. like, you know what? These mistakes that I made, I'll never make them again because now they're basically cemented in time in a video where I made an idiot of myself. But I don't <laughs> I don't care. I'm willing to do that to remember to remain, you know, to remember to Well, to you do don't have to stuff. be you don't have to be the authority to do something. That's what no. I think that's what people, you know, the the analogy is always made between YouTube and TV and people were used to when you watch TV and you watch like especially on like PBS and you watch this old house, you're watching the experts, right? right. YouTube isn't that. YouTube is like I'm going to show you what I'm doing and right. you know and you, it's, it's you okay. You could be as daring as me. That's really yeah. what it's like I'm going to yeah. be daring, you could be daring too. It's kind of wild actually seeing people just go, yeah, to hell with it. I'm going to do this. And well, that's what I, I was doing. I wasn't yeah. over explaining anything. And that's, that's might be what I said in the Justin video where I just said, I don't want to over explain anything. And then I want to show the whole process. So I sped it up to show as much of the process as I can. Mm -hmm. So you could see even, even in fast forward, you see a lot of nuances. There's enough. There's, there's enough. There's a lot of learning in the nuances of sped up. And, and the lack uh, of music was I, um, a copyright. A, <laughs> I got a couple of copyright strikes in the beginning. You get copyright strikes. They, mm -hmm. they, they, they've modeled that now so you don't get it in severe trouble. They're just like, hey, can't use that song. So we're not going to monetize this video. We're not going to mm -hmm. kill you. We're not going to get you off the platform, but you can't use that song. Just remember. It is, it is wild, by the way. It is wild, by the way, how much YouTube has changed. Like, yeah. it's like in the old people days, used to use copyrighted music all the time. And it's yeah. like, now it's like if there's even in the background on a radio in your shop, you yeah. better be distorting that in some way or they're going to just right. ding you. The worst but. is when you use a song they give you and then you get a copyright strike. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, it happens on Instagram it. constantly. It's a problem on Instagram. Where you, so, you you select something for your reels or your stories from their library, and then it gets taken down for copyright reasons. It's like, wait, that's why I use your library, like, right? And I... so, long story short, I stop using music. Occasionally, I'll do. Lately, I'll be doing. I'll do voiceovers. Lately. You are doing more voiceovers. I noticed that. Is is, is it that just helps? It, 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 there's an intimacy that I feel like I need to give the audience that I feel like. Like in the back in the day, it was like I was a little bit colder. I didn't really mm -hmm. have that intimate relationship that I have with the, you know, the, the every day, the top 500 viewers. Like anytime right. I put a video, there's always going to be those top 500 guys that are always going to watch, guys and girls, no matter what. And so those five to a couple thousand people, I'm talking directly to them. And Does I'm saying, I'm saying hey, it I'm making a model bridge this week because I got to make a video for Type On. This isn't any BS. <laughs> cool video, by the way. Ninety pounds of rocks on popsicle sticks <laughs> is a pretty cool video. But I'm like, hey, I'm making a, I'm making a video using Type On glue. Hey, <laughs> hate me if you want. I don't care. You know, it's just, just being direct. I feel like it just, I feel like I owe it to the audience to be direct. And sometimes it's easier to do that than to. I'll do a talk up and a talk out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and it's also kind of pulling a little bit of the vlog style in without having to do a whole vlog, which never has anyone pushed, do. has anyone pushed back? Cause you used to offer the VOs as a, um, as a Patreon perk. Has anyone pushed back and gone, Hey, wait a minute, I'm paying for this. Why are you giving it away? Like <laughs> they just, they slowly fade away. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I like to, I like classic Duresta. I want classic Duresta. <laughs> but I do get, I do, I still do the voiceovers and occasionally I provide content. Like there's a great video of me and Derek. I interviewed Derek on my Patreon about, a behind the scenes story that nobody knows there, mm -hmm. there, and i could say it here because there's, there's no risk of losing the show anymore the show is gone but me and derek and graz and pat and jackman did this show on netflix and there was a point in the show where derek was off the show derek wasn't in the cast anymore and we all banded together and said we're not doing the show unless you put derek back in the cast whoa like, are you serious or like we're 100 percent serious 
Wow. And this was before we filmed one episode, so we didn't know where it was going. It wasn't like when you look back now and you see like, oh my God, how could they have risked all that? There was nothing. We didn't even yeah. have like this room wasn't even set up with anything by the time. They're like, yeah, we're going forward with the concept. Uh, yeah, we don't want Derek on the show. I'm like, uh, that's not happening. That's crazy. And so yeah, I, we talk crazy. about it. And I'll send you that link to that. That's absolutely that crazy. Picture. Yeah. And so that's the type of thing I do on Patreon. Occasionally I'll do like conversations like that. And, and the voiceover thing is definitely, you know, I, I go through spurts. I'll do like three or four of them and post them at a time. Okay. I wish I was more regular, but you, you see how crazy my life is. Yeah, no, you got enough going on. You just do what you're doing. Everyone's watching and everything's good. Um, you you want to jump over to thing of the week? I'm I'm dying to see what you what you bring to the table this week. Although I have an <laughs> I have an idea of what it might be, but um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's the yeah. Justin Maybe documentary. Of How course, it is. I gotta give Justin some love, especially this is the very first time I'm being I'm in public since it's been released <laughs> a couple of days ago. It's so wild that that came out like yesterday and i'm talking to you today and it's like oh my god what a great piece of con like if the conversation stalled we had something we could pivot to it's great <laughs> thank you thank you justin i appreciate it <laughs> justin, justin maybe put out his, uh, another documentary in his series of him interviewing makers and he interviewed me mm -hmm. and it's it's a beautiful piece 48 minutes and the last 10 or so are just people saying now okay i know you're a crier yeah. How hard was the last 10 minutes of that video for you to watch? Honestly. I cried when, when <laughs> Ann said, I'm crying at a plastic statue. I'm crying at a plastic statue. You want to give the plastic statue a hug, Ann? Yes. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, God. I'm tearing up thinking about it now. It was so yeah. great. And I had just gotten – and it was sweet because me and Ann – met a few times but you know honestly i feel like me and ann bonded in the last year or two and then us seeing each other again for the first time like maybe since the pandemic uh you know mm -hmm. i sort of no, i don't remember if i saw work much gone. but anyway first time seeing ann in a few years and in, in person her staying at my house with her husband it was just very special and then maker camp is just still teary-eyed and you know you, you and i talked about uh you know I, I i've alluded to it but i'm i'm a single man now Mm -hmm. going too deep into it and that was on my mind at maker camp because it's all fresh that now i'm a single man and so i was i was a bit mushy i was really mushy at, at maker camp you almost made me cry right before the, right before the photo i posted on my instagram yeah. you whispered and i like i said i'm not telling anyone what you said in my ear but you whispered <laughs> something in my ear and i just went god damn it why did you do that <laughs> like, you're supposed to look happy in this photo you damn you jimmy damn you <laughs> well to that being said we, there was a time where i was having a, i was when the show came out mm -hmm. and and the producer said when this show comes out it's going to get weird mm -hmm. there's going to be people who say this about you there's going to be people who say that about you there's going to be people that suddenly are your best friend and there's your best friends that are suddenly going to stab you in the back he said just yeah. expect it especially it happens every time like there's a big television release and the show came out and everything that he said happened i had yep. friends that i thought were my friends that didn't have my back and i have friends that i didn't know love the show which which is nice mm -hmm. and uh you know the, the bigger more painful part was the few people that kind of lambasted me in the cast in public thinking that we stole the show from somebody which we didn't yeah. and uh a couple people that were intimately involved throwing everybody under the bus for some unknown reason and people related to that person and you know i did never went publicly and said anybody's name or said nope. anything about what was going on i just kept my mouth shut everybody saw what went on everybody mm -hmm. watched it Everybody said it. And then, you know, you sent me some really beautiful words of encouragement and it was unexpected and it was, it, it I, was really, really nice. And so you know, that's, it, why, I, that's I, why I told you I loved you and I appreciated you having my back. I, I felt like it's really weird because in kind of a weird way, and I'm not going to get emotional. I'm not looking at you because I can't say this and look at you at the same time. <laughs> I see you looking but, away. But I'm looking away. I'm looking down right now as I say this. But in a lot of ways, I kind of feel like you're almost like a father figure for me oh, because you. all the stuff that all the stuff that I didn't take advantage of that my dad knew how to do, I feel like, I don't know, like you're like that, like I can kind of call Jimmy like my, my role model father. Oh, thank you. And I've really gotten to that point. Like, you know, I always talk about you and Steve Ramsey kind of like back and forth, like that same way. Like, I think my dad would have absolutely loved you. I think oh, if you could, and if you would have met my dad, my dad was a Brooklyn born, big old Barry Italian dude. Right. Like, and it's just like, 
you know, he would have just watched your stuff and goes, yo, did you see what Jimmy made today? That's amazing. And I'm, I know that anyone that knows my dad that's hearing me saying this right now who knew my dad would just be like, yeah, that's, that's Carmine. That's what Carmine would have done. Carmine would have loved Jimmy. Carmine oh, would have wanted to meet Jimmy. Carmine would have been at Maker Camp with me wanting to meet Jimmy. Oh. And it's just like I, you remind me so much of him sometimes. It's like when I saw you getting when I saw you getting ripped apart, and it's like, and it's funny because I didn't know about the other shows that were out before Making Fun. Yeah, but I knew one of them that was super popular, and I was like, wait a minute, this is. I mean, if anything, all right, I don't know that you can really call it a ripoff anyway because it's not the same show, but. If anything, that's the people that should be pissed off, not you. <laughs> You're a copy of the same idea. Like, stop <laughs> right. that. Right. But what I love, what I love is the last time I saw you and you said that you had actually spoken. It's weird because, you know, you get in this room where everyone's shouting back and forth and the two people that everyone is shouting back and forth in the name of, they get together and chat and it's like, yeah, we're fine. It's like, right. oh, okay, this is done. Then we squash this. We can move on with our lives. <laughs> right, 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 right. So yeah. I it love, I love. Time. It was a very was. weird time. You know, it was. I, I see a therapist and I had a really tough time with him and, and he got me through it. And, you know, at the time when Taylor was in my life, she was, she was very helpful with it. And, you know, words of encouragement from people like you and a few other people that stepped up to bat unsolicited. And said, hey, I see what's going on and, you know, you're not when, a bad person. When something like this happens, your circle tightens a lot. And when yeah. it tightens up, you realize like, oh, okay, I know who's got my back. You know, when I, I, I use the, I, a good example, like um, in episode zero of this show, I said, look, my job is 50-50. It's going to be around at the end of the year. I don't know. I don't know. I was almost fired, you know, three weeks ago. Like I could be gone at any moment. This podcast needs to be commercially successful for me because it's going to be something that is going to be a way that I support myself. Yeah. And damned if a whole bunch of people didn't sight unseen, no episode dropped, jumped in and subscribed. They'd never heard an episode of the show. This is episode one. It's dropping on Wednesday (laughs) and people jumped in and supported. And it's like, Oh my God, like this community is just as you know, it's just the best. It like is. I needed help and I didn't want to just ask like, Hey, can you give me money? But it's like, I can give you a really good podcast. I have connections. I know people I can get them on and we'll have good conversations. Right. I've already demonstrated what we can do. Give me some money for it and let me give you the podcast. And that'll be our trade of value. And damned if people didn't rise to the occasion. And it's yeah. like, Oh wow, this is just fantastic. So, well, like I said, you know, it's not to blow, not to blow up your butt, but no, please, you, please, you're, please. You're a very Comments. passionate guy. You're a very passionate, and you know, from one New Yorker to another, it it's it's infectious. And thank you to hear you. You know, the, your love and appreciation of other talented makers, and your want and need to show them off and share their experience and share your experience about what you learn from them. It's it's great. So. Well, just 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 uh, as if to just prove you correct. Allow me to give you my thing of the week. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so when you were on on right before Christmas last year with Ethan and I, yep. um, you and I and Ethan, we did our things of the week, and I mentioned a certain maker. And I'm just going to tell you, you made his day because you followed him right after that. And he was like, oh, my God. You know, I don't know how – I don't know if you know this, Jimmy. I don't know if you know this, but – there's a rumor that people, when they get followed by Jimmy DeResta, have screenshots of the notification on Instagram. I know it's, it's crazy, crazy. <laughs> but it's just really, really funny. And somebody sent it to me. Uh, just recently, you followed someone I know, and they said, I have arrived. And it was just a picture of Jimmy DeResta followed you on Instagram. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know why you saved a screenshot of that. I totally don't have two different versions of the same screenshot on my. But, <laughs> but you followed my friend uh, Jeff Stein, a weird guy. Yes, um, yes on, he's, he's great. He's wonderful. And he did a video. Um, he just did a video on Autodesk's CAM function called From SVG to Toolpath, How to Set Up a CNC Project Using Fusion 360 CAM. Oh, and that video so is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it no, is. He, he did. He did. It was a Groot. Groot. Yes. Groot. He did, he did Groot. Groot. Oh, from yes, three sides or four sides or two sides. I forget exactly. Mm-hmm. But four sides. In the round. Unbelievably well done. <laughs> it's unbelievable. He's, he's, a, he's a freak yeah. as far as his talent level. Like he's just really good at it. And so we went through, I was saying this with Al as we recorded episode two, but 
we went through the process he was going to use in this video. Um, and he went through the process with me as my, as the Guinea pig for the video. And we bumped into a couple little things that he changed for the video just to make it make sense. Oh, cool. And, and now it's like the video is out. It is absolutely oh, fantastic. I have to watch it then. You so, do have to watch it. Cause it's funny when you said before that you have an in and out relationship with fusion 360, I'm yeah. like, this might actually turn you around a little bit on yeah. it. So. I need, I need, I need some consistency when it comes to fusion 360. Yes. Kevin uh, Lazat, who's a uh, mm -hmm. on, on Instagram. Kevin Lazat is, has been sort of my machinist guru and he's mm -hmm. half my age. He's 25. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that crazy? And he's my machinist. He's my machinist uh, guru. <laughs> And he is also a fusion guy. And whenever mm -hmm. we used to sit together, which is he's, he's now in a relationship and we don't see as much of each other as we used to, but we would sit and just share fusion tips. I'm like, Oh, when you do this, how do you do it? Uh, how do you do that? Oh, how do you, oh, this is how I do it. And you know, we haven't got a chance to do that in a while, but that's, that's another good way of learning fusion to sit with somebody that knows more than you or just as much as you, but learned a different way. And yeah. The two of you can grow together. I feel like I feel like you can I don't know that fusion is something you can learn without someone teaching you. Yeah. Like I've tried to learn from like videos that teach the room and I've gotten something out of it, but the yeah. nitty gritty of being taught yeah. is hard to replace with fusion. It's just too big, yeah. too powerful, and too complicated. Lars Christensen, by the way, is a great teacher. Oh God, yes. Lars wow. And I met Lars and, and like you, he's another passionate guy that just makes you makes you want to hug him. I was watching Lars's videos before I had Fusion installed because I just watched just watching someone who's really good at something do something is it's just cool always action. interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, not like we have any of those. We don't have accents. Everybody tells me I don't have I have a New York accent. I'm like, man, you should meet my friends because I can hear their accent. Like, <laughs> um, I wanted to take a second and thank the first round of people that support this show financially, because without this, without their support, I don't think I could do this show. So those people include Matthew Serio from Artigiano Serio. Oh, we love you. Jimmy, I, Jimmy, just, I want you to just go, I know them or I don't know them. Okay. Just, I know just Matt. like Matt's, yeah, Matt's, I was Matt. there at the premiere of the show with his son. He's, he's a, the sweetest guy. Matt came up to me at maker camp. Matt came up to me at maker camp and he's like, Vincent. And I turned around and I'm like, Oh God, this is going to be one of those situations where I don't know you, right. but thank you. And I said, I'm sorry. I just, I'm who, who are you? He goes, Oh, uh, Matt Sario. We met, we did meet at Jimmy Speedway. I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it clicked. I was like, yes, of course. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. But um, yes, he is definitely, he's, a, he's one of the good guys in the yeah. space. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Jeremy Spees, you've definitely met Jeremy. Jeremy. He was at Jimmy Speedway and Maker hey, Jeremy, Camp. Yeah, I can thank Jeremy for always supporting me in the comments. I tell him that. Aw. Jeremy's a good dude. Jeremy's a good dude. If, if, if it's Jimmy DeResta or Katz, he's got it covered. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, lives, he lives near my sister, so he knows my sister. Ah. The um, Jake Drews of Make With Jake. Um, Rory Langefeld of RLL Woodworks and DIY. Robert J. Keller. Rebecca Cole, Meg and Chris of Onyx Design Studios. You know Meg. I know you know Meg and Chris. Um, Brian Arsenault, Seven Hills Maker. Jeff Stein, aka a weird guy, oh. and Ed Swanson of Ed's Clocks and More. Oh, Thank you so much, guys, for supporting the show. I really appreciate it. You subscribed before there was a show, and I don't forget things like that. So there's a lot more coming for subscribers. I mean, obviously, the video version of the show is going to be a new thing that I've not done before, but I think it's something I want to have a go with and see how much work is involved. I mean, it's just me, but I think we can make it work. Are you record you're recording the video for this? I am recording the video for this. Is yeah, it going to come out 8-bit, or is it going to come out? Uh... It should come out. I hope it comes out okay. Well, you'll know if it came out okay, because it'll be on my YouTube channel if it comes out okay, and it won't if it didn't. So. Oh. I have two episodes that did the same thing, but like I said, I think the local version, what it records on your computer, is fine. Yeah. So, so they're gonna, so everyone's gonna see is the time where I muted myself, blew my nose, and then wiped my tears a few times. <laughs> wiped your tears a few times. You know, I, I think that surprises people. I mean, you know, just we'll cl we'll close it out in a second here, but I do think that's what surprises people the most about you, because you know, you look at this, this. You know, first of all, you're a normal guy, and you know, you're not this tough like your picture on instagram makes you look so intimidating <laughs> and you mean it's like he's just this big smiley huggy guy and it's like <laughs> damn i wasn't expecting that you know so oh, do, do you ever do you ever feel like oh wow i can't believe people think that i mean like no just get to know me i'm much softer than people realize <laughs> well that, that picture on instagram is a is a, a tin type that my buddies took in 2015 
Oh, wow. When I was in Colorado, these guys uh, Snapchatted me and said, hey, we see you're in Colorado. We were there for a wedding. He said, come to our house. We'll take a daguerreotype style picture of you. And they did. And that's the picture. That's my Instagram. It's a, so it's I had to stay awesome. still because it's a long exposure. So I looked mean. <laughs> you don't want to blur. You know, I'm just like an Abe Lincoln zombie style. eyes. It's like an Abe Lincoln style photograph. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. I mean, just I love I've loved watching you just kind of just consistently doing your thing, whatever. I, I think it's just fantastic to watch. I think it's a kind of an inspiration to people that if you're on the right path, stay on it and the world will catch up to you. And I think that's oh, what people you, have done with you. And it's just I think that's where you inspire people like me the most. It's like, you know, sometimes it doesn't pop right away. Just keep grinding, keep grinding, keep grinding. Thank and you very much. It is just awesome to chat with you. And thank you so, so much for motivating me to do this and for being my first guest. I really <laughs> Anytime, appreciate bro. it. I'll be your um, last guest too if you ever need one. I was going to say, if you're going to be my last guest for this particular podcast, that's uh, whew, that's a little rough because that means it's over this week. But <laughs> hopefully we get a couple more. But no, thank you so much. Um, if nobody knows where to find Jimmy, I don't know what rock you're living under, but you can find him on Instagram at Jimmy Duresta or just search Jimmy Duresta. He's pretty much everywhere as Jimmy Duresta, which is great because you don't have a fake name. It's just Jimmy Duresta. That's right. James DeResta. If you're looking up my patents, you got to Google my my legal name, James DeResta. No joke. I got a notification that I got an email from James. And I'm like, <laughs> who in the hell is... Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> okay, I wonder if I accidentally emailed you from my... Was it... I must have emailed you from my at me account. Probably, yeah. You know what's great? You know what's great? You are like Madonna at this point. You have one name. Like you could say in our space, you just say Jimmy, and it's like, oh yeah, it's Jimmy. Everybody knows Jimmy. Like this is, <laughs> if your if your name is Jimmy and it's not Deresti, you go by your full name. But <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Oh, you're you. just Jimmy. Everyone else, the oxygen is out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, brother. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, Thank you for joining me, everybody. Um, thanks to Jimmy for coming on. And I really look forward to catching up with you next week. Um, we already have the episode recorded, so I know who the guest is. The guest is Big Al Schultz from New York Woodworks, another Here person from up in Jimmy's neck of the woods, Jimmy actually. Yeah. Um, and we are going to sign out, and we'll be back next week. Jimmy, is there a special way you like to say goodbye to people? Well, I'd like to say first, thank you for the words of encouragement before we hit record. So it's very special to me. We had a couple of little private moments there. So thank you. Thank you. A hundred percent. I'm always here for you, brother. I'm always here for you. And uh, I guess I just say, make something every day. All right. There you go. You have a certain amount. You have a certain feeling for everybody. I love you. Love you. <laughs> love, love you too. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>